Hi, welcome to this CMC Markets look ahead to the bank earnings this week, mostly focusing on the UK and Europe. Now, banks are popular to trade anyway, uh, but they've really been in caught in the eye of the storm of this market sell off this year, and it makes this season particularly interesting. Looking at the UK banks, particularly PPI, cooling UK growth, and the financial turmoil, uh, financial market turmoil from Q1, definitely big headwinds to these earnings. And we're pretty much expecting a, an earnings drop across the board. Each of them had their own different factors at play. If we have a look at Barclays to start with, um, really what we're dealing with is Jess Staley, the new CEO, he's been in about six months now. He announced the, the bank was splitting into two divisions last time. That wasn't too well received because that's going to cost a lot of money to split the bank up basically into its UK operations and a US operation mixed together with its investment bank. That's going to be costly. It cut its dividend from 6.5p to, to 3p. That obviously shows how much costs they expect going ahead. It sold its South Africa business. Um, you know, that's that's obviously going to bring some, some money in the short term, but it loses exposure to emerging markets, and that altogether hasn't been that well received. And the, the stock is down 22% year to date. Pretty massive drop, and you can see that on the chart here. Um, just take more interest on in this chart, you can see that we've we've had a, a, a change in momentum recently. We've pushed beyond the 60 level in the RSI. Um, if I just put a, um, a couple of lines here on this chart, you can see that we've taken... Uh, we've just out taken out that low at 150 but really we're looking at the potential of a double bottom here and so what we need is for if there were some positive surprise on the earnings to get through this 176 level still clearly a downtrend at the moment but signs of it reversing well below that 200 day moving average but as I said beyond that 176 175 area then actually we're looking a bit better for um, a push towards that moving average if we change the focus uh, next in line to, to Lloyd's Lloyd's more of a domestic story. Um, some of the headwinds to the international banks, the US banks, has been the, the drop in trading. Not so much with, Roy's, uh, with Lloyd's. We had a return to profit last quarter, a special dividend announced. So actually, the shares are only down 7% year to date. Uh, the sector's still in trouble. Lloyd's relatively performing quite well. Um, still, the, the government uh, looking to sell its shares is hanging over the stock, and it's going to limit the upside. A lot of people are going to be waiting on the sidelines until the government gets rid of its, its share in the bank. Uh, and with the shares down at the moment, uh, that's looking like it might take a little bit, little bit longer. Um, looking at the Lloyd shares, though, really the focus here, I think, if I just draw a little um, little circle here on this chart, it's this big gap um, on the last earnings release that we're focusing on. We've almost filled that gap, and we're pushing higher again afterwards. So if we can continue this momentum, get up through 70, um, get back towards that 200-day moving average, then looking a lot more positive uh, for Lloyd's. Switching over to uh, RBS here. Now, it was disappointment from RBS because unlike Lloyd's who have just um, announced a um, return to profit, uh, RBS looking um, a lot more, a, a lot more, pers a, a lot better perspective, but still it's not going to have a dividend until 2017. So that that was disappointing. Um, it's almost entirely government owned, makes it very difficult to own the shares at the moment, and it sold its Williams and Glynn branches. So again, a little a little bunch of cash come in for the bank, but it loses exposure to those um, SME business loans that are actually uh, should pick up um, if you imagine that over the long haul, the UK economy is going to do well. So it's lost some exposure to that. Um, RBS is down 18% year to date, so shares have taken a complete slamming. And you can see here, if I just um, draw on a, a trend line here, you can see that we're uh, we're basically coming up to try and retest that trend line. Fits in nicely with that 260 area. So that could be a bit of a confluence of resistance if we, if we do manage to push a bit higher. It, it might be a struggle to get through there in the time being. Uh, we're looking pretty overbought here, although it does look like there's been a positive shift in momentum. Um, looking outside of the UK, um, something that was particularly in the eye of the storm in this recent sell-off um, was Deutsche Bank. Um, doesn't help that I'm misspelling the uh, the name there. That's down 28% year to date, taking an absolute hammering. Um, th if you remember, during January, it was the issue with its uh, cocoa bonds. The yields on those particular bonds that can be converted to equity uh, suddenly spiked on fears that the the bank 
uh, could default on some of its debts and they would be first in line to be converted. Investors didn't like that. Uh, eventually those yields came down and some of that has come out of the market. And we can see it's actually put in a higher low now. Um, so some sign that actually things are turning around for Deutsche Bank, but still we need to get really beyond that 19 level on the chart here um, to, to, uh, to show that things have really turned around. And uh, again, you're noticing a bit of a pattern across these charts, a bit of a double bottom uh, coming across in, in many of them. Still well below that 200 day moving average and you know, the emphasis is, is to the downside. Uh, one thing to mention there with Deutsche Bank is they are heavily reliant on on trading income and it's a, been a rough quarter in markets and that's expected to be a, a big headwind for them. Um, and then lastly, um, going over to Spain, uh, Banco Santander, oh I've gone to its Brazilian stock, well, hold up. Uh, there we go, looking at Spanish stock here. Um, here you can see actually this similar bottoming formation in the chart. Um, its shares are only down 6% year to date, so the best performer of all these stocks that we're looking at. And it, even though it, it's Spanish and it's exposed to that uh, peripheral of Europe, which is obviously a, a big problem if we do get some kind of crisis in Europe again, um, it's going to be one of the most hard hit. And you can see that it, you know it's basically lost half its value if you scroll back in the chart here. We came from 8 down to uh, below 4. Um, but nonetheless, it, it does have a more stable domestic business and has been one of the better performers this year. A um, few things to look out there for um, in these banks. If you are on the CMC platform, one thing to quick note out here is that you can check out our morning star research uh, and have a look here. You know, particularly relevant, obviously, when you're looking at the earnings season, it's just to check out the price to earnings ratios. For example, looking at Banco Santander, um, where we've got a 7.9, uh, whereas the uh, the sector median is 12. So actually, relatively undervalued from Banco Santander. Factor that in with your price charts and the story for the bank. And, uh, and see if that's uh, a worthwhile trade for this earnings season. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks a lot. This is Jasper Lawler signing out for CMC Markets.